There we go. Welcome everybody to Your Potential. Today we have a special guest. His name is Ernst Vetter, and he's going to be discussing some things that he can do. I've had a look at his TikTok account. And he seems to be able to levitate and move things with his mind. And so I have a bunch of questions that we're going to be asking him. He will have a translator just in case he can't answer any of them uh, properly. But from time to time, he'll be speaking as well. And so thank you all for showing up. I can see you in the chat. Without further ado, ooh, Ernst Vetter, welcome. Hi, everyone. Hi, Ryan. Thank you very much for inviting me to your channel. Yeah. It's a big pleasure for me. So let's start. Let's start. Thanks for joining. So before we get into how you attain these abilities, these, these sit up powers, actually, um, and why you wear a mask. Can you give us a demonstration? Or would you like to wait a little bit on that? Okay. So the first question, why I wear the mask? It has two reasons. The first reason I had a big accident in my life and I have, a, I have damaged my face and I don't want to show it uh, in order not to scare people. That's the first reason. Maybe that's the biggest reason. And the second, um, really, I don't like to be famous. As I see, I keep two lives, a normal life and a life like a master of secrets. And I don't want to combine this life. I want to be a normal human in a normal life. And I don't want that people know me like a master in a normal life. And um, of course, I keep all my rules in my real life. I uh, don't cross border in several rules, but still, I don't want that people know me exactly like this guy who is who can do something special. <clears throat> Maybe that's the reason why I wear the mask. Huh. That sucks, man. I have a third degree burn on my chest, and it makes it uncomfortable. You know, taking my t-shirt off in public, but especially kids, they just stare. You know, they get, <laughs> they get together and just stare. I can't imagine what it would be like having something on the face. Ah, man. Okay. Would you be open to doing a demonstration now or maybe telekinesis? Okay. Just let me explain what I will do. Mm -hmm. um, I just get my camera to be down. And what you see is is some glass table and couple glass jars. Uh, just that you don't think this is, can be some magnet or something like this. I try to move it, but uh, as Ryan said, I don't do it with my mind, only with my mind, I do also with my hands. So uh, to make this, I need to read the field. So I touch it. And what should I say about this small telekinesis? It's um, uh, just so you understand, the small telekinesis like this use almost the same energy like I would run around two miles and the preparation before. It's not a joke. Even to move a small object on the table and even the objects I know, because what does I mean I know? Um, to make telekinesis, you have to have some special abilities. You have to read the field of some object. For this, there are some special exercises. You have to learn how to read it and you have to visualize it in your mind and then just move it using your hands. But anyway, you use more your brain. But even for the object, you know, you need really a lot of energy. I just have to say that around one hour before I made meditation for this. And I'm not quite sure if I can repeat it in 10 minutes. So it uses really a lot of energy. Wow. 
That's fine. That's fine. I apologize, to people in the chat. If you hear my daughter crying, she's uh, not too well. She just came in the house. That is incredible. I try, I will try to. I will try to make it maybe in twenty minutes, thirty minutes again. Just look how it will work. Maybe for people who who could not come at the time, and I will just try. Okay. I'm still processing. Wait, can you say that again? How much energy does it take for you to move that? Uh, okay, that's not quantity. It's just like uh, I would compare, like uh, like I would run around two miles, really, like a jogging two miles. So uh, okay, in Europe we say two kilometers, like around one mile maybe, but it's really hard. It's really hard. You don't feel it like a like a muscles, but you feel like you're losing energy in your body. Gotcha. That was going to be things. my next question. My yeah, next exactly. question was going to be, how does it feel in the body? Because if you're not running two miles and you're just and you're sitting there, something's got to be leaving. Something's got to be, you know, you got to be feeling some form of exhaustion somehow, right? Exactly the same. Um, like you, for example, <clears throat> something is uh, some as you 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 don't. Uh, you, I cannot compare it with the jogging, but somehow it's empty of energy. And for sitkas, you have to prepare it before. And it's really hard. For example, if someone uh, watched my video where I um, make a levitation on some uh, piece of tree, it was around 30, 40 kilo, I don't know, maybe. And I tried to make it two days before I succeeded. Really, it was really hard. I couldn't wow. do this. I almost thought that I will not do this at all. And then I made meditation around three, four hours. Again, try again, try again. And only after a couple of days, it started to work. <clears throat> so it was really hard. So how long does it take you to prepare for, for a feat like levitation, for example? For levitation, it's some special preparation. It takes around two, three days. If you, for example, know that you will do this, two, three days, absolutely correctly nutrition. Uh, you have to sleep uh special time or exactly you have to go sleep at around 10 o'clock and wake up at six o'clock then only uh nutrition like around five times a day small portions nothing big uh not combined special uh, art of nutrition and then meditation around i would say it was last time i did it maybe one year ago mm, two days preparation and exactly before i did it around two hours and um, many people saw my videos in a nature i explained why i do this uh, very important that no one is around you that's very important so that not people so many around you uh, i even don't know if it's real levitation if i see people around someone who make this levitation because it's almost not possible your biofield shouldn't be combined with biofield of anyone and exactly there, you have to be alone. If you have a cameraman, he should be really uh, far from you, not close to you. And on the nature, uh, there is we uh, at least I try to find some uh, power place where I see the good energy. And exactly on this place, I try to make this levitation. But as I may, maybe a couple people follow my Instagram, they saw that I almost broke my leg and now I guess for the next 10 12 year uh, months I will not be able to do this again because that's not only some energy that also your body shape you have to be in a good in a good physical shape you break it falling during the levitation this was it was just by preparation I was uh, making on a slack line and then I try to make levitation, and then I fall down. And um, okay. it was wrong step somehow, and I, I almost broke. It was not broke. Uh, now I need translation. Yeah, Vivik Nolnogu. Lydia? He twisted, uh, his uh, he, he twisted his leg, so the leg was um, really bad damaged. Oh, I see. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank Lydia for her translation. So now it's possible to explain everything for you and Lydia will translate for me. Lydia, thank you very much. Yeah, for those of you just tuning in, we, we do have a translator here. You know, um, 
to help with Ernst. He can answer some things by himself, but just in case, she will chime in from time to time. Thank you for so, having me. No problem, no problem. Um, I would just like to address some things. I've noticed the comments are starting to reflect uh, this next question a little bit. Some doubts, some doubts. Um, it's, it's hard to look you up without somebody pointing out certain things. I would just like to get an answer here. So I've noticed that you have a lot of videos where you're in nature and those are pretty cool. The one that stumped me was when you picked up that, the tree, the tree branch, and you did it easily, the 40, say 40 kilos. You picked it up with one hand, and you lifted it in the air. And there's a few where you're levitating, uh, but there's a couple, and they, they mentioned it in the comments too, where you've got a green screen behind you. And for that reason, people have thought that perhaps you're, you're faking it. Um, what do you say to those skeptics out there that don't believe that you're doing this at all? Um, okay, I would say uh, if they start to learn something, they will also start to feel energy. Um, for example, me, I can I can see some levitation and I can make a difference between fake and real levitation because when you see the real levitation, it it is not so nice like uh, Superman or like maybe, I don't know, just someone who fly like a bird. Levitation doesn't look really nice because it uses a lot of energy and um, you have to be really concentrated. And about green screen, I wouldn't say that it, it would not work because for this, I think you have to be at Hollywood somewhere uh, in order to have this. and. I don't get so much money so I can I can make it. Yeah, it is really not possible. I think it's not possible. Many people don't want to see the uh, real reason. They just want to find some excuse not to do this. Because if they see this, okay, that's uh, maybe that's a fake. Okay, I will not do this. And if the people start, the way is really long. The way to even to get to telekinesis is really long and it's hard. And for example, we in our school, we start with a very simple exercises. We start to reading some small cards and uh, only people who really want or really have a heart, they want to get something, they succeed it. Because for many people, they come and they think that they can succeed in a couple days. Yeah, it's not possible not possible and I would say there's, there's just for people who just want to say there is nothing okay and we we will do we will do this just in our way I don't know how so <clears throat> about this screen screen okay if it's in a room it could be but I guess my student Alex he showed something in a room and he proved that there is nothing behind him, nothing over him. Uh, but even if you give enough proofs, the people will still not believe because they don't want to believe. It doesn't matter what you prove. And in my case, I gave up to to uh, to tell something. I know there are people who believe me, who come to me, who trust me, who achieve something or to get something and the people who will never come. I guess it's everywhere like this. Yeah, it's it's um it's hard to convince people nowadays. And so yeah. what what is the green screen for? Cuz I, I couldn't make heads or tails as to whether or not it was a green screen or perhaps I, your wall was just painted green. Ah, uh, you mean my green screen where I'm sitting sometimes? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that 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 was not for some uh telekinesis or for something like this. Uh I just saw that <clears throat> maybe I can use it like a like this background to replace the background, but actually I never succeeded. <laughs> For this case, it's always like green. Now it's gray. It's not a. It's not a green screen. It's moving yeah. something. That's a paper. That's a real backstage. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's. I I even don't know why I use it. Maybe just. Uh, maybe somehow I will re replace the back background, but. Till now, I didn't do this. Ooh, this isn't in the, in the um, this isn't in the questions. I just want to touch on this. You have a student that shows himself levitating over a a lake. 
a substantial yeah. distance. Yeah. Like, is he your best student? Like, that that seems like it would get a lot of attention. It's, um, I would say I have several students and many of them don't want to show them up. They just do for themselves and they don't want to be famous. For this one, for the, I mean, you mean Alex, um, he's, um, he's um, just really strong. And that was his, his big dream to, 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 to fly. And before we start uh, my school, he asked me around three years. Uh, at this time, there was no messenger, there was nothing, there was only email. He wrote me almost every day. And then uh, I was in Ukraine and I met him there. And I start to, to teach. I thought if he will, if he will um, not believe me, at least in a small part, I will stop. But he believed everything I told him. And so I know if the student believes their master, they will get something. If the people have doubts about my words, there is no way to continue. And I saw that he is really very, very uh, strong with his uh, dream. And um, it took around, if I remember correctly, it took around one year and he started to make this levitation. It was really, it was really, I was really proud about him. Because it's it's something you know, but he is a really good. Uh, he's a very strong man. He make a lot of sport, and he's from nature very strong. And uh, I just tell something what people shouldn't maybe know, but I convinced him to start with a magic, because before he didn't do it so really properly, and then he uh, told he asked me how to fly. I explained him. I taught him. And then he said, what will now happen to me? Maybe will people come from some special secure service or something like this? And I told him, if you pretend to be a magician, no one will come because yeah. you can hide it. That was a good trick. You know, if you just hide it like you, you're a magician, like a David Copperfield, like something like this, no one will believe that you can do this. And if you show some small tricks and then you show something was really wow, people will think that's a trick as well. Mm. Sound logic, it makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. So my audience wants to get to know you better. Your name, Ernst Vetter, is that your real name? Uh, my first name is Ernst, it's indeed, but my second name is a little bit modified, but um, I like this word. Vetter means in Russian, the wind. And that's my big dream to fly like a wind, but till now I can't do this. <laughs> I fly like I want... a small wind, not like a big wind. <laughs> small wind. I wonder <laughs> what it would be like. I used to have dreams of flying throughout the clouds and creating some type of field around me that would just move and rotate as I just For beeline through the clouds. What would that take? Ryan, for, for rotating, it's really hard because you have to keep your balance. Um, that's really very hard. What I would do, uh, I would, for my dream would be to come over 50 meters. 50 but meters. That, at this time, um, you have to, you, you are not allowed to cross the border in your fears. If you start to get some fears, if you start mm. to be afraid of something, you lose control over your levitation. So you should keep your you should keep your limit and at the moment when you start to be afraid you have to go down never yeah. go upper that you start to get some scared because then you lose control you lose your uh you, you lose really control over yourself and you will fall down and believe me from five meters it can be dangerous already even yeah. from five meters doesn't sound like a good time at all um well, so let's see what else we got here. As a child, were you always drawn to the supernatural uh, or did you have completely different interests? Like when did this become interesting for you? I think as a normal child, I never thought about this. And um, um, 
I first time I met someone who showed me these abilities, I was over 20. It was just by case. I just met some guy. I was in America and met some guy. Uh, I was visiting just America and met some guy who who showed me this world. But before, as a child, I never thought about this. It was I, I saw that I have I saw that I have something. Uh, we spoke with you before, and I told you this story. I am not allow. I'm not quite sure that I I'm allowed to explain uh, to, to tell you this story again, only if you allowed me. But uh, actually, no. Actually, I didn't want to be some special, or I never thought of being some master of Sitha. Never. That sounds cool. It's like it just fell in your lap. Like <laughs> most people dream about this stuff, and you're in your twenties mid 20s and it still it still happens uh to you yeah that is so cool it's like you're never too old to learn a new skill you know i mean for this skill you are really never too old um, um i remember there was some student he was over 65 came to me and start to learn uh, I told him it will be difficult for levitation but for telekinesis and pyrokinesis it will it will not be too late because for levitation you have to be uh, in a good uh, physical shape you have to make some exercises you have to be on the top on physical but uh, for telekinesis and pyrokinesis and other abilities you are not uh, you shouldn't be on this level of physical shape hmm. i don't think i've seen a video of you doing py pyrokinesis before i've seen some of your students um, real quick, if any of you want to check them out on TikTok, how can they find you? What's your at handle over on TikTok to see your videos and videos of your students as well? On TikTok? Yeah. Um, really, I don't know how to find my students on TikTok. Many of them are on my Instagram. Uh, on TikTok, I'm not quite sure because before I was uh, even not on TikTok, I was on a Russian network. It was VK. They have a lot of students. They contact me, they follow me, and they shared their videos with me. I don't know if they're on TikTok because right now it's the situation between couple countries where it's not allowed to use TikTok. You know? and, yeah. yeah. Privacy and many of them are from there, from this country. It's okay. I was hoping that they could see uh, some of the videos that I've seen on your TikTok instead, and so that they can see what it looks like, the whole levitation, pyrokinesis, and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, what else we got here? Yeah, my YouTube is very easy. It's youtube.com, Ernst Vader. It is. Yeah, you can find him on YouTube. Yeah. Is anyone else in your family... Oh, actually, I'm going to change this question. What do your family think about this? Oh, Ryan, I try not to tell anything about myself. Uh, we separated for a long time and a long time ago. And um, they know that I did something, but they are really not so curious about what I do. And because of my mask, they cannot recognize me. And that's just uh, good luck for me because, you know, I think my mom would say, hey, don't fly so high. You can, she, maybe she would, uh, she would accept that I can do this, but she will really give me some advice, not fly so high. Maybe it's too cold outside, you know, like a mom does all the time. And for this, I, I don't show up myself them. They know that I do something. I remember maybe a couple of years ago, I visited them. We were on some celebration, some birthday, and I show some small telekinesis. But, um, you know, in my family, many people think that they just a trick. They couldn't, uh, they couldn't uh, reveal this. They couldn't find anything how I do this. But they saw that it's still a good trick. And actually, I'm happy about this. Yeah, families are very hard to convince. Yeah. I think Jesus said that um, it doesn't matter who you become, how big you get. Whilst you're away from your home, when you come back home, they will always only see you as Ernst or Ryan or, or Jesus in his case. Yeah. You know?
it took me a long time to convince my family of what I was doing. And um, in the beginning, for at least four years, they just thought I was dreaming and making it all up. And a lot of them turned kind of kind of dark towards me. Um, but eventually they, they figured it out. <laughs> Man, well, it's good you're wearing a mask. Hmm. What are your views on religion? Are you Buddhist? Okay, no, 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 that, that's a good question. Um, I try to explain myself, but then if I need help, Lydia will help me. Mm. Um, before, before I met this guy, before I met my teacher, I was a strong believer. I uh, somehow I read the Bible and the Bible fall down and I saw that scene that uh, suddenly the Bible fall down on the floor. I said, oh my God, what I did, you know. And when I start to uh, to know more and more about uh, about uh, energy, about chakras, about uh, this um, all things uh, with Siddhas, I didn't uh, I didn't uh, I I didn't stop to believe, but somehow I skipped this level of religion. I understood that there is a God, like a big energy hub. And it doesn't matter what's the name we give him. And the really funny things, all names, what we give to the God, it's connection to the same energy, to the same energy hub. And then I understood that religion is more a tool to control the people and not to connect the people with the God. And then the reason why I should be on some religion when I can skip it and I can connect exactly to God. That was my view, you know. It's, uh, for example, if I if I pray to God, I pray on my own way. For example, I know that uh, God will never understand our words because He doesn't know neither English nor Russian, nothing. He understands only what we think, and we shouldn't think with the words. We should think with some objects. Like we would not know any language in this world, but we would see something. For example, I see some jar, I see some table. And exactly what I would ask, for example, if I need some food, I would just uh, imagine a jar full of the food and then send him this image or send him this uh, later. And then if he get it, he will give it to me back, you know. And for religion, Mm, I'm not a fan of religion. I'm sorry if I disappoint someone. That's fine. What do you, I mean, this wasn't in the comment, this wasn't in the questions neither. I'm just curious. Have you heard about Jesus believing in similar concepts to you and a lot of us in the spiritual community that God is this hub that we all come from? Have you heard of that? No, never, never. Apparently, there are two. There are two gods in the Bible. There's in the Old Testament a very militant god, and then there's one that Jesus talks about, and it sounds very much like the same type of being a lot of people are experiencing on DMT trips and on ayahuasca uh, trips. It's just a little interesting there, but I. I I agree with you. <clears throat> Religion is quite constricting and it seems to be a way to manipulate a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So, you've talked about not being able to levitate around people. You can't have your biosphere interacting with other people's biosphere. Yeah. Yes. And it takes you days to charge up to be able to levitate when it comes to relationships can you have a relationship and still do the things that you're doing um there is a little bit difficult but i'll try to explain so when i start my way my teacher told me if i i, I was in a relationship at this moment it was around 20 years ago and he told me for beginner 
it's very very bad if you for example use your second uh, chakra it's like you know, sex religion or just religion or just relation i mean religion sorry religion, a relation with it sex or with some lady where you have sex you will lose all necessary energy and then uh, my relationship at this time was not so good and i decided to break it in order to get something but i was so convinced of him that i i didn't even doubt about this he told me he didn't tell me to break this yeah he just told me if you keep your relationship you will get nothing and then after a couple of weeks, I told my girlfriend, stop, it's over. I, I don't want to be together. And we just really broke up. And then um, I start to learn. And really, I understand that uh, after a couple of years, if you really need, you can have relationship, but it should be really limited. For example, uh, you cannot have it every day. You cannot have sex even every week should be really limited should be really restricted should be maybe if you need it first of all you have to um, to get the energy on the second uh, chakra and then just have it maybe once a month but um, i would say uh, since uh, since 10 years uh, since 10 years here yeah, i am i am single i am not in a relationship and i don't miss it because i know how to replace this energy and i don't mean that what you sold i mean something else i mean um you can uh now i need translation вы можете взаимозаменять энергию благодаря тому что вы получаете энергию с соседних чакр и отдаете энергию с этой чакры на соседние вот тогда вы можете делать взаимозамен энергии you can actually um, transform the energy from one chakra to another and you can accumulate the needed energy to the chakra that needs that specific energy so in other words you kind of like switching it from one to another and you condense it in one specific area where you need it mo the most that was a great explanation what does the sacred the second chakra what does it feel like when you've got enough energy okay lydia no no no. i know i mean i need your translation i will explain now so um когда у вас много энергии на второй чакре вы ощущаете некое подобие влюбленности как будто у вас бабочки в животе when when you have enough uh, energy in the second chakra you feel it like there are butterflies in your stomach so there is a sensation of the butterflies in your stomach so when you know when you fall in love when you when, when you accumulated so much with like feeling of love but there is no one you know no one around you but you feel this and that's exactly the sign of a full second chakra energy that sounds familiar and then you can use it then you can use it yeah there was a time when I was doing a uh, Druvalel Melchizedek meditation uh, where you activate the Merkaba and it's like 33 steps. And you have to breathe in a certain way to do it. And he has you condense energies in the body. And I kid you not, it felt like my hips, well, that, that, that whole area, the whole area there was uh, getting fuzzy, almost like you can pass your hands straight through it. And I would just get so sick. <laughs> I would feel very nauseous and end up collapsing. But um, it kind of felt like, I don't know if it's the same feeling as, as you're describing a butterfly feeling, but it felt like a very reactive space there in, in near the second chakra. But it was also quite large, so it kind of felt like it encompassed a little bit of the of the root as well, the, the first chakra there. Um, that is really cool so no relationships 10 years wow yeah um but you know you um <clears throat> it shouldn't be not uh, absolutely restricted i mean if you forbidden for yourself to speak to uh communicate and even to flirt with someone then you close your second chakra the sex is not so important but very important is how you handle with the people how you feel with the people they 
for example, no one lady can know if you will have something with her or not. But for example, if you're really close and you don't open your heart, if you don't open your mind to her, she will think something bad. And exactly that can uh, that can break your second chakra. That can just make some problems there. Not not having of sex is something else. So for the people, but I mean. Um, for the people who don't have it for a long time and who don't uh, replace it with other energy, that can that can be some problem. Um, yeah. Okay. And so your life outside of relationships, what do you have to balance in order to do this? That's a very important thing about nutrition, about daily routine. Um, for example. Uh, you have to have this. You have to go uh, go sleep at the same time. It it should be in the best case before midnight. You have to wake up almost always in the same time, and then uh, you have to control your inner internal energy. You have to uh, you have to take care of what you eat. That's very important. Exact, for example, for me, because I know how to do everything and I learned many years ago, I can break these rules sometimes. For example, if I want to eat something, what I'm not allowed, I do this and it didn't uh, affect something bad. But for the people who are only in a process of learning, if they break the rules, they fall from the upper side exactly to bottom and start from zero. That's something bad for them because for my teacher, I, uh, for my students, I say don't break the rules, follow these rules. But for me, I can break it for a small part because somehow I fix it in a in a several in a some stage. And the very important thing is working with chakras. So the second chakra is not so important uh, as just can be seen, but uh, the first chakra is very important. And the seventh chakra, the seventh chakra, it's a very, very strong connection with uh, with energy of, for example, energy of God, if energy of our universe, that's very strong connection. Um, actually, there is many things you have to take care about. Mm, I even cannot say something is more important than other. That's, that's like combined. And very important not to um not to be very lazy and not to think that you can do everything for example if i start uh, my exercise i start exactly what my students start on the first day you know i start from beginning every day very very easy exercises because uh, it's not like you just make something hard and you don't repeat from the beginner mm. was there anything that you ever struggled with when you were getting into this routine like was there any particular part of the process that you found difficult whilst transitioning from your say average life to now a more controlled disciplined one does that make sense okay yeah um, actually it was on the beginning it was really hard it was really hard to uh, be uh, on some to, to keep these rules because I was some type who really loved uh, some sweet things and who really loved coffee and I was I smoked sometimes I even smoked some something what you shouldn't smoke you know you are not allowed to say that here and uh, my teacher told me okay and uh, look if you want to get something you have to understand that's your abilities and that's your just other things and what's more important for you you have to decide you cannot keep both either this or this and i said okay i i try to not to do this for two months and if i can keep this i will just um, I will just do this. And after two months, not smoking, not drinking coffee, not uh, eating sweets, I saw that my body doesn't need it anymore. So it was uh, no more needs in my body. 
it was more neat in my head, in my brain. And then I thought, okay, if I can change it, why not? Because they're more healthy for me. And um, it was a good step. I, I, I never regret about this. Um, I know, you know, just this sugar, for example. Um, I, I, I want to say it, for example, couple couple months ago, I was on some birthday and I, uh, I ate uh, some piece of cake. And uh, after this, I couldn't uh, move any things for two days. It means my ability has stopped because of my brain. Now, I even don't want to think what would be if, it, if I would, for example, drink a couple glass of wine or even of vodka or whiskey. Then I think I would be disabled for two, three weeks. And for the people who only start this, that can be really uh, final and then come, have to come down from, from beginning. Or they have to, to start and then start again, or stop and start again. Yeah. It's really, it's really, it's really bad to lose everything. For the students, that's really important to keep these rules. They cannot break. If they break, then, then just you know. But the worst thing, for example, they start to learn by me, then they break the rules, eat something, smoke, drink alcohol, and came to me and say, "Hey, your system doesn't work." That's the worst thing because I know that it works. Of course, it will not work if you do this. Yeah, you know? imagine if it sets you back a couple of weeks. Yeah. They're not going to be able to do it within those weeks. You need to be very disciplined with how you, how you, how you manage yourself, really, your habits and everything. Uh, Ryan, I would say, for example, if people want to uh, stop smoking, uh, they only need to not to do this for 21 days. After 21 days, your body doesn't need this cigarette anymore, but your brain, your mind will ask more and more. But your physical uh, necessaries, so I said, it, it's not more there. It's just what you what you want to do, but it's not what you need to do. I see. Everything you, is in your mind. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you allowed to talk about your teacher? Who taught you? Yes, why not? His name was Arne Sanjustin, and um, yeah, he's already dead. Uh, he was really great man. I, I just okay. I, I need translation because I cannot uh, mess up anything. Uh, yeah, это был великий человек. He was a great person. И он очень умел uh, разбираться в людях. Когда он видел человека, он мог молниеносно прочитать все его намерения. Uh, Lydia, I think you are not online. He, no. he, could, he could read the person really well. He could read all the intentions that the person would have. And he, и он мне сказал, что у него очень часто были ученики, которые просили его всему обучить, но он знал, что его системы будут эм, неправильно использованы. He had students, he had people who were asking him to teach, but he knew that uh, his system is not going to be used in the right way by them. И на самом деле то, что я сейчас преподаю, это он мне сказал перед своей смертью, что я имею право его систему выносить в люди. And uh, to tell you uh, what I'm teaching right now, it was his words that he allowed me to do and continue this legacy so I can teach other people. Потому что до этого передавалось от ученика к, от учителя к ученику, и это не имело такого серьезного распространения, и он понял, что это больше уже связано с возможностью оплаты, то есть возможностью денег у людей. So before um, it was taught from a teacher to a student and it was very secluded between two people and it wasn't going to the masses and um my teacher gave me the permission to bring it to the masses bring it to the people and uh it's it's okay to have an exchange of energy for uh the payment for it for instance like if you give so much there should be an equal exchange of energy и самое интересное, что это действительно были его слова по поводу того, что он очень бы хотел, чтобы эта система не осталась в чьих-то одних руках. 
And it was really his words that he re truly wanted the system to be out there. So it wouldn't stay inclusive within just one individual's hands, or it wouldn't be closed uh, or attached to anyone in particular, but more so he wanted to bring it to the masses. And th these were exactly his words. And the question that many people may ask, if this system is truly belongs to Arne, or he took it from somebody else. На самом деле, эта система была дана ему тоже от его учителей, но он невероятно много в ней модифицировал. As a fact, this system was also given to him from his teacher, so it was passed to him from his teacher, but he modified the system in really extensive way, in his own way, so he truly shaped it under his own belt. И он ее невероятно упростил. And he made it even much more simpler, so it would be more approachable to people. Потому что если бы мы показали ту систему, которая была дана Арне, то нормальные бы люди ее просто не поняли. If we would truly show the original system that it was passed to Arne by his teacher, then ordinary people, ordinary masses wouldn't really get it and wouldn't be able to achieve it. Okay, all right. Uh, so the original system, was it, was it complex? Was it, because I know in Taoism, a lot of how they explain it meditations, it's very... Very complex. Uh, as when I saw it the first time, I thought I should be really this wizard, like a wizard, you know, you should know everything. And even there was a lot of things even combined with a black magic. And I really, I didn't like it. He replaced these things. For example, connection with demons, what should it be for normal people? I don't know if someone did uh, at least one time in his life some black magic, but if you do this, you feel how how empty, how uh, weak you are after this. You, I did it. I did it once before I met my teacher. Just I, it was it was a very easy ritual. On a cemetery, and believe me, one week I couldn't properly walk. I just lay down. I could not. I lost everything. I lost all my energy. I stand up yes. and fall down. That and, th and th that was exactly the same thing was in this uh, system. And Arne said, "No, it's no way. So we can we can modify. We can switch to a normal system. We can just think something." Else. Okay, he didn't tell me because I met him too late. For this case, I should be born like around 50 years before my birthday. And he did it for a long time. I guess he started when he was 25. And then, you know, he worked all his life. But that was not his main job. He was working, um, did he? No. Uh, on работал на один фонд, очень серьезный. He was который... working to one hedge fund company. И его задача была устанавливать определенные uh, колебания на биржах. And his task was to uh, differentiate the moving of the stocks up and down. Скорее даже влиять на умы людей, чтобы они покупали тот или иной, ту или иную акцию. To influence the mind of people so they would buy particular stock. So he would play a role who would influence somebody's mind to do whatever needs to be done for the stock to go up or down. But without doing anything, just with his visualization. Sounds like X Men, <laughs> yeah. a telepath. It's like this. Yeah. That has opened up a whole new topic. <laughs> That's I would say he he earned he earned he earned good money in his life, but the very important thing he was just he gave almost everything away. You know, if he saw someone who needed money, he could give him a couple thousand. That was really easy. For some beggars, he could give him two, three hundred dollars just for nothing, you know. That's nice. And that's Arnie? Yeah. Oh, so he was taught by someone. Where did the teachings originate from, this this 
cryptic system that had black magic involved. China, uh, somewhere in the Far East. Um, really, I don't know. I don't have this information where it's from. But I guess it has something from one part, maybe it's from China, other part, maybe from India. I think so. I don't know original of original um, path from this system, really. I'm sorry. There's a Buddhist monk on YouTube that levitates off the ground. Have you seen it? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, he's in like a dark place. Maybe it's a cave and a magician comes to meet him and he watches him come off the ground. Would you say that's something similar to what you're doing? Who, the Arne or who? The, um, the monk, the, he's like a Buddhist ah, monk. Of course, of course. I mean, um, for me, it's uh, just, um, of, uh, since couple years, I couldn't sit in this lot of position. Uh, but that's because of my knee. And if I if I can uh, succeed to sit like this, I will do that. Of course, it's just it's very very easy uh, levitation, because Lydia, because потому что когда энергия замкнута в одном цикле, она намного сильнее работает. То есть когда наше тело выпрямлено, мы теряем энергию. Когда оно зациклено, когда оно идет по одному контуру, оно намного сильнее работает. When the energy is accumulated within one circle, within one sphere, it's really easy to manipulate it and work with it. Could you use the energy for other straight, things? When even your body is straight, it, you lose more energy. Yeah. I see. Wait, when your body is straight, you lose more energy, but in yeah. a circle, when you, like in a, in a circle pose, you yeah. have When you're sitting in a, this lotus position, you keep your energy. You accumulate. Oh, okay like this perpetuum modulus you know <laughs> you don't lose it is it because the legs kind of create a closed circuit yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah could you use the energy for something else like heal the changing something about the body i um many times i use uh energy to change some events in my life um healing as well uh, but, uh, for example, for healing, I uh, see before something is ill. Because if you make uh, these esoteric things, you, uh, your main uh, point, you have to listen to your body. And many of our problems start very before they show up. And like an esoteric, you have to, to listen to your body and you understand where can come problem. But um, I... Um, Sometimes I help other people, but I don't do this really uh, with pleasure because I see that I lose at this time a lot of energy. And um, you shouldn't be so um, you shouldn't be so generous. You shouldn't give so much away um, because if, if if the people see that you help them, they can take more that you wanna give them, and then you are losing. Really, you are losing. Um, for me, for example, I change a lot of events in my life uh, because if you have connection with some egregors, uh, this connection can ch this uh, egregors can change something in the past. Maybe you know that we just live in our 3D <clears throat> in uh, three dimension, but the egregors live in uh, I think it's 4D, so they have also one dimension like a time. They can come down and up. Up is in the future and down in the past. So they can change something. If you have if you have this uh, connection to the segregators, they can change something in your past, but not far away. What are they? What are the Gregors? Yeah. What are they? Gregors, um, Lydia. Эгрегоры это um, такие сущности, которые наполнены информацией и uh, связь с ним Egregors are the entities that are filled with information. И мы можем с ними связаться только через определенные ключи. And we only can connect to them through certain keys. Um, они находятся не в нашем измерении, поэтому связь происходит более через посылку сообщений и возврата какого-то события. 
they are not they are not in our field so therefore the information transmits uh, еще они находятся не в нашем измерении, поэтому общение с ними проходит через отсылку сообщений и возврата какого-то действия с их стороны. They are not in our field, so therefore uh, there is a transmission of information that's going from one field to another, so there's going to be the link in between. Если, если вы хотите простой пример, if you, want, if you would like to have a simple example, uh, мы можем себя сравнить с рыбками в аквариуме. We can compare ourselves to the fishes in, in, in the fish tank. И вокруг нас находятся какие-то люди, которые на нас смотрят. And there are people around who are looking at us. Мы не можем вынырнуть из этой воды. We cannot swim out from the water. Но они могут обойти, они могут проникнуть в воду, они могут отойти, подойти. Вот это, в принципе, то сравнение с эгрегором. But they can come to the water if they can be inside the water. So that's the comparison, what the egregor is. I think I'm lost a little bit. How did we, um, how did we get to egregors in this, uh, in this conversation? I remember we were talking about some things and then boom. Связь с эгрегором происходит через настройку определенных ключей. Lydia? The connection with egregors uh, comes with uh, Tuning to a certain keys. И эти ключи это работа наших чакр. And those keys are the work of our chakras. Mm. Oh, so you have to work with them in order to open the chakras? Uh, not with them, not with the Gregors. You have to work on your chakras, then you have this special key. The key is like the position of your biggest chakra to the weakest chakra. Mm. Then rotation, and then the coefficient. For example, plus or minus. And if all chakras working in a, some special uh, um, order, order, then you can you can make some visualization, like some object, and give it there. This moment, this egregor will keep it, and maybe will realize it. If you, of course, uh, allow to get some some result from him. For example, I give you an example. Uh, I can predict my future, but I never can predict some uh, lotto. You know, yeah. I never win a lotto. I tell you why. Because the prediction of uh, future is combined with one egregor part and this money egregor. I'm not allowed to come to this money egregor. So I will never, exactly at this moment, I don't do, I don't see anything which part of number of these balls will win. Did your teacher teach you about Gregor's? Was that a part of his system? Of course. Oh. I, I see even have mean. some. I, I even have some interesting course in my school about the Gregor's. And, and many course, so I explained this small parts of this key connection, how to, co how to connect with some Gregor. Because it's not all the time the same. It's not like you can combine with all egregors. You can just um, you can just make setting on your chakras in a several order, and then you just connect it for some couple minutes or couple hours, so you can communicate. It's like you charge your phone, you call your mom, and this moment you speak with your mom, and then your battery is over, and then you you cannot speak anymore. Sounds like Eastern magic, Middle East magic. Okay. <laughs> it's it's good. It's good. It's it's I looked into Tibetan magic at one point. I became obsessed with magic. And I looked at different cultures and how they would use magic and how they would connect to entities. And when I got yeah, but, to uh, the Ryan, but there are several entities. There are several uh, parts of entities, you know. The yeah. um, many as in, in, in each dimension, there are some art of uh, entities. For example, there are some uh, entities in our dimension, in 3D dimension, but we don't see them. Mm -hmm. It's like this um, entities uh, who get in you when you, for example, when you're weak with your chakras or when your vibration are low. For example, some people who have more this fear vibration or more urge, anger vibration, they let their entities in their body 
and then develop some some problems with the health. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was cool. That was interesting. Uh, I think we're almost done with the questions, actually. Let's, let's see. You answered a lot of them just now. Hmm. Okay. Then uh, maybe that's time. Uh, you know how many people watching us now? 153. Wow. Good. I try again. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, but now I'm really a little yeah, bit exhausted. weak. I have another but still, question. still, I just want to show that there is nothing for the people that's only glass. No things to move it, and it's also the glass. No way for magnet or something like this. Yeah. I was watching something yesterday, the ghost show, and I wondered if perhaps ghosts know how to do what you're doing in order to be able to move an object. Do you think they know how to do telekinesis, but they only figure it out after they die? It's just a theory. Lydia, I need your translation. Okay, that's a good question. I never thought about it. <laughs> Uh, I think that they can uh, because um, exactly that's the energy. That's uh, what, what what we think about ghosts. That's exactly some part of energy, and of course they can connect it. But I think that's only if they have this intention to do this. Mm. For example, um, you're going somewhere and you can just uh, you know you can just uh, touch someone with your shoulder. Uh, you don't want it, but you do this and someone can fall down with a ghost, it's not possible. So only if they want to, but I guess for them, it's only if they want to give you some sign. Only just like a giving sign, for example, um, and that will happen only in some um, special moment. For example, if you think about someone who left you, yeah, who passed away, and then if he is exactly in this moment, there, he will give you a sign just like this to scare you. I guess that's no way they don't do this, but they can really make a telekinesis, maybe not so strong, but to move something, to touch something, easy it can be. Cool, that explains a lot. So, in India. There are stories about gurus that can initiate people just by touching their forehead, then bang, their third eye opens up. Is there an initiation process with you and your students? Uh, did you get initiated? Yes. Or did you yes. just teach this system? Um, that's the initiation from my teacher, this amulet. I will make a picture later. That's his cool. gift to me. He initiated, but uh, that's not... Um, only one there's um, okay maybe i have to to explain everything what's going on there um just for the people come to my system or to my school the such a system uh they start to learn there is actually no magic there is nothing extra of the ordinary just normal exercises working with chakra working with energy nutrition correctly nutrition um Nutrition, sorry, nutrition, I'm sorry. And then um, after they achieve something, after they're on some special stage, I have to create some key of personality. It means, for example, if people will sell my system, they can do this, but uh, for the students, it's not so good because they will not, uh, uh, they will not come to the next level. They just keep, keep, yeah, key of identity. Lydia helped me uh, uh, to explain this. 
key of identity. I tell key of personality, but yeah, key of identity. And that's uh, some special sound which I do in uh, when I know the situation of your chakra stage. For example, I can read your chakras. I can see uh, what state, for example, has your first, second, third chakra. And then um, I combine with uh, this special chakra um, key of some uh, sitras. Okay, Lydia, now I explain. I, I, I need your help. Just help me to explain. Когда, мы, когда я вижу человеческие uh, состояния чакр, when I see uh, the condition of a person's chakras, я могу добавить в них определенные установки по соединению с ключом. I can add particular meaning or influence that is going to be connected to the particular key of particular ситха. И это и есть вход в определенную ситху. And this is actually the entrance to the particular ситха. И вот тогда я создаю определенный звуковой ключ. And then I'm creating a specific sound key. Когда вы слышите этот ключ, когда вы слышите этот звук, ваш мозг начинает работать намного более усиленно, но только при условии, что вы уже добились определенных успехов в этих упражнениях. When your brain hears the specific sound, the specific key of uh, individual chakras, then it's kind of you tuning in to what needs to be achieved. So your brain is kind of opens up and receives that information of the particular energy. И, возможно, это прозвучит немножко эгоистично. And it might sound a little bit egoistic. Но я безумно рад, что я никому не рассказываю, как этот ключ работает. But I'm really happy that I do not disclose how this particular key is working to anyone. И, и не рассказываю, как его сделать. То есть не рассказываю детально, как его сделать. And I'm not telling and revealing to anyone how to do it in details. Просто мои системы уже часто воровались и продавались. My system were stolen and they were resold behind my back very often. Но, но на самом деле система без ключа. But the system without the key. Это все равно, что патрон без пороха. That's exactly when you don't have enough of the um, shooting bullets in your gun. Нет, именно пульвар. The pulver in a and again, the bullet will not fly. Um, so, Ryan, uh, now you understand, yeah, what, what this key of identity is. It's really like initiation, initiation and um, uh, this way I create also for many of my students. I create some amulets. Yeah. Trademark, yeah. Do people have to be initiated in order to levitate? or to perform telekinesis. Lydia, can you give me please translation? I didn't hear anything. Well, your sound disappeared to me too. Oh. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. That was weird. Must have been a glitch. Um, do people have to be initiated in order to perform these feats like levitation and telekinesis? Or could they do it without it? I know you mentioned it earlier that people were selling your courses and they weren't having the same effect does that mean no that uh, be... they they shouldn't they, they can start without initiation uh but at uh when they are on a some uh stage of this uh exercises then they need this initiation it's not like from beginning it's uh when they are really almost finished they just uh they, they cannot они не могут проломать потолок лидия they can break the ceiling. And именно поэтому нужен ключ личности. Именно для этого, чтобы выйти на определенный. They need the identity key to come to a certain level. Но в начале никакой в начале никакой инициации не нужно. In the beginning, there was no need for any initiation. Okay, that's good. That clears clears a lot of things up. That's that's interesting. So. This is another one of those comments of the internet that keep screaming. Uh, I'm seeing this running comment. 
that keep showing up about your courses, about the price and the prices being very high. You mentioned earlier about equal exchange energy. Is that a part of it? Or like, can you explain why the prices are the way that they are? Uh, I can just um, give some example. I can't be uh, really angry with my teacher, but I paid him, you will laugh, I paid him around, if I remember correctly, around 30 of fourteen thousand dollars just for teaching me uh that was his price i didn't discuss this he, just he, you know it, it was like in a shop for example uh you take some bread and you say uh to the seller how much and he says for example, one one dollar you give him you don't discuss yeah and exactly when i thought what he could i didn't discuss anything and then um without without this Without this getting money for this, you are losing your energy, you are losing your abilities. It's some law of universe. I don't know how it works, but if you do everything for free, you will lose it. And I think it's it's all it also in other uh, way of school, for example, if you're a good teacher, if you teach your students for free, somehow is the time you will lose your abilities. I don't know how it works, but it works like this. Huh. And, um, you know, I don't feel so egoistic because it's not the things what you need uh, for survival. It's not like some healing. It's not something uh, what you can't do, what you can't live without it. Mm. And I would say it, uh, it's, it's not only expensive. It also takes a long, long time. Uh, for every ability, you need to spend around a couple months, even more. For example, for levitation, you need to spend around 10 months, at least, or one year. Yeah, and for telekinesis, I would say I uh, got some result in, uh, in nine months. But in my case, my teacher was close to me often. And I was really... It was my dream then later. It was my dream to, 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 to do this when I saw how it works. Um, but uh, I don't think that it's something bad if you take money for this. Mm. I believe money is necessary for a lot of things, especially um, you know, living <laughs> living expenses in America. It's, it's very expensive to um, survive, unfortunately. I just give you some example. I met someone and he had some problem uh, no i give you another example at this moment i i was ex almost at the same time uh, people knew about me and one had no money he has some uh, illness another had also some illness not similar but something else and one guy paid me for helping him another said really i i will die if i if you will not help me And then um, somehow I thought, okay, maybe I can help him. I even don't know if he would die. I just help him. A couple couple weeks later, I got his illness because he could not pay. I don't know how it works. And from this time, I understood, no, no way. What you do, you should be paid. Whatever you do. Exchange of energy. Exactly. Are we still online? Ryan is somehow away. Yep, I'm still here. My uh, camera okay. just died. I'm going to switch to my webcam. Perfect. Yeah. Let me see here. Give me just one minute. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't see any comments. I would loudly answer them, but I don't see them. Okay, I try to do something so the people have more fun with me.
Very cool, very cool. I entertained your public <laughs> right now. <laughs> Awesome. We're almost coming to the end of the questions. Mm. Is there a particular ability that is only kept between student and master? Something you absolutely cannot tell the public? I don't know if there are something what can be kept, but uh, for example, everything what I know I gave out, I explained in my courses, I explained my school, and I think that was also nothing uh, what my teacher didn't tell me. I don't know how it looks by other students, but uh, I, I think I had a good luck to keep to, to, to know my teacher. Because I heard that other teachers are not so generous, are not so good to their students. Many of them don't like to teach them. You know, they, they teach somehow, so the student has feeling he was taught, but indeed he got nothing. Mm. Yeah, he didn't share any secrets. And then, you know, somehow there's a small part with which he didn't share. My teacher shared everything with me. I think mm, there are some abilities what I would like to learn in the future, till now, I I didn't get it. I would really love to, to learn this. Mm, but um, I don't have my teacher anymore. I guess if he would if, if he would uh, be here, I guess I, I would uh, I would get this um, this ability much faster than now. That's exactly this um, travel in time. It's what I really want to do. Traveling, travel in time, time travel in time. No, but um, that's not possible like a travel in time, uh, like in a movie. That's only possible travel in time and put some thought in your mind in the past to change uh, your mind. Yeah, there's a theory that our intuition is actually thoughts being sent back from our future selves, telling us not to make wrong decisions, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah exactly. But there are some uh, notes. And this note is if it's uh, if it's uh, hard, if it's uh, close, you cannot go behind this note. It just stop and uh, it's some events. For example, if something happens, something bad, you can, like, for example, some accident, and you cannot uh, go behind this accident and tell to yourself not to do this. You know, it's very um, it's very short time. It's like around one hour right now for example we have some time you can just go only one hour back hmm. but uh, hmm. my teacher told me he could do this uh, somehow um, in a couple months ago I don't know how he did at this time I didn't want to do this you know I was not so interested I was not so curious about this maybe that that's my fault I should learn this uh, I see no, uh, I see no interest to to learn these abilities because you know, I was I, I thought okay, I live now, I need me only right now, not in the past. Hmm. And somehow he told me that that is possible. He he told me he can uh, change something one month ago in his life. But now I start to learn. I start I I try to read uh, some his books what he left, but. Um, I don't have uh, often access to these books because that's in some library in the clan and it's not, um, I don't have often access to this. Does that mean that if you went back an hour or some months and you changed an event in your life, that when you come out of the meditation trance, things will be different? I think so. I think it will be. Marty McFly. The the question is if you really come back from meditation, maybe you are not existing there. You know, for example, <laughs> uh, if you can change your past. Oh, okay. You so you'll really be your somewhere past, else. Maybe you are you are not more in this place. Uh, <laughs> but oh, really, gosh. now I only start. Yeah, I only start to. To change, so I, I I try to put some thought in my mind, and 
it was not successful. So I'm only in the beginning. Okay. In terms of um, abilities, are you working on anything new outside of time travel? Like, is there something that you could actually figure out with what you've got at the moment? Uh, many people asking me about hy uh, hydrokinesis. So mm. to control the water, I was trying, but mm, somehow I was not curious about this. So now my main point is travel and time. That's mm. what I really learning now. Okay. Very cool. Okay. So that's it for the, uh, the questions for, the, for today's, I guess, show. It's like a podcast. Should we go into the chat and see what everyone has to say? Of course, why not? Yeah. Can you see the chat on your end as well? Uh, mm -hmm. If you sent me the link, Lydia, can you do this for me? Maybe you need to see the actual live stream, the YouTube live. I can pull that up and send that to you guys too. Pull that up, Jamie. Are there a lot of questions? Ah, yeah, it's been rolling this entire time. <laughs> Not at an incredible speed, so I can keep up with them, but they're definitely there. Do you have Telegram open at the moment? I can leave it in the chat. Yes. Yeah. Lydia, can you please resend it to me? Do you see something? Oh, yes, okay. Now I see. Okay, here we go. I think we have to run to the bathroom in a minute as well. <laughs> Love you. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, my throat is all messed up today. I've been getting over a, uh, an illness that my daughter brought home from school. <laughs> yeah, so this was people. awesome. Yeah. Okay, Skit said this was awesome. Tiny Gypsy says it's fun to think about. Zenith Tesla. Question, is it possible to use astral energy to increase and or use said energy to levitate and use said telekinetic abilities bigger slash more. Does that make sense? What, what, what question did you read? Um, let's see, I'll scroll back up. It's already gone, but I can remember it. He said, is it possible to use astral Lydia? energy in order to do what you do? Lydia, can you please give me translation? There we go. On the screen. Oh. That's pretty cool. Can you see it? Uh, yeah. Um, about this astral energy. Uh, I... I'm many times I get this question. Okay, now I see this comment. Um, I should say I'm not so quite strong in astral. I know something about it, but I don't know if you can use the astral energy to use it for for telekinesis. I think it's not possible because astral energy is something else. It's more information. You have to um, you have to understand uh, one way or one uh, road is more energy and another is information and i think the astral is more information path or information road it's like you know how to be a bodybuilder but you never been to gym you know you know everything about this but you never try to do this astral mm, i would say no it's not possible I have a weird I use, experience. I use, I use, right, I use astral to uh, con to speak to ask something my teacher, 
but um, I don't use it for getting energy. Okay. Uh, my students told me that, uh, for example, they try to make exercise in astral while they're sleeping. They make astral projection and this astral projection working with my exercises, which I gave them. Um, but I think it doesn't develop their uh, feeling of uh, field of object. Weird. I have this, um, I had this experience where I accidentally convinced my physical body that it was the same as my astral body. Mm -hmm. And then when I was astral projecting, I would levitate. And uh, when I came back to my body, my body was in the air. And then it would just fall straight on the floor. It was bizarre because I couldn't even feel my body. It was like the atoms were moving so fast that it became all fuzzy and then weightless. I couldn't feel the effects of gravity or anything. So I was also curious if you could use astral projection to kind of somehow uh, bring that ability to the physical body and have it come off the ground. But when you do it and when other people do it that have learned under you, they seem very aware, very cognizant, enough to be able to move a stick above their head or below them. When I astral project, I'm out. That's it. I can't be aware of what's happening here at the same time. So I would imagine it'd be a very different experience to be able to levitate. Mm. Oh, uh, the last uh, comments, my printout say Ernst also does the money ritual looks very uh, satanic. It doesn't look satanic, guys. It's just working with um, just working with some special ritual, but it was nothing uh, with uh, satanic, nothing with black magic. And sorry, it wasn't. It was a runes, and it was some gold coins, and it was a candle, but it was not satanic, sorry. Satanic would look mm. other, different. A good question here. We have, uh, what is the imagination? In your opinion, what is the imagination? If you're using it to enhance your chakras, you're using your imagination to levitate, do you believe that the imagination is just, just that, all made up, or... Is there something more to it? Imagination, it's not equal to visualization. Imagination is only what we want to do. Visualization what we are doing. So imagination plus energy, internal energy, plus our chakra energy, it's uh, then is equal visualization. And visualization helps us to, because only imagination, it's almost nothing. Hmm. That's good good okay what else do we have here hmm. here's one here do you ever try remote viewing to gather information remote viewing hmm. um i just um, for example uh, get some information it works six chakra it's our intuition chakra um i um I was very, very weak with this chakra. I didn't believe this uh, information, but now, last since ten years, I I start to to believe it, to trust it, and uh, it helps me. And I can even tell you how to develop this um, this uh, intuition. It's like, for example, you uh, decide to do something. And you write down on the paper how you're feeling at this moment. For example, you wanna minus one, you wanna some make some trip, some dangerous trip. Of course, you're a little bit scared, but try exactly understand what you feel, what you feel at this place. How is it feeling? And then you write down. And then you go to make this trip. Of course, you do this because otherwise you will never understand if it's dangerous or not. Then you come back and you analyze happened something bad or not if not then it was only your imagination it was no real intuition so couple steps like this and then you understand you can really understand it's your imagination of happening something bad of it's real something bad what you feel so write exactly what you feel each small part and then analyze it after you come back and then you can understand what's the intuition what's the imagination and what's your just fears 
So King Bren 20, 222 says, you visualize the outcome then? I'm assuming he's talking about telekinesis. Do you visualize the outcome or how does that work? If you, if you mind sharing. Uh, you mean the outcome of uh, moving some object? Oh, yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. Um, of course, uh, there's a couple steps. Um, okay, it's easy to explain, but it's hard to apply. Um, you just uh, we just skip this uh, this step with uh, reading the field. Uh, just uh, stay on the stage. I, I have already information. When I have information in my mind, and then I have energy for visualization, I combined. And when I move this object. First, before I move it, I see how it moves, and exactly that's I I call this twin, and this twin is moving and it's binding to a real object. I use my hands. I know I use my hands, and it has some some reason. Our mind uh, believes that we when we use our hands, it's moving. Exactly for telekinesis, you have to use your hands. Don't sit like this because your mind will never believe that you can do this. Of course, when you're on the top top stage, you can do this, but it's hard for me. Better I use my hands, but what I see, I see the visualization of moving the object, and then it's binding to a real object. So that's a visualization, not imagination. Imagination is something empty, without energy. It's only our fantasy. It's good. I'm gonna have to replay that and watch that back. I'm just going to run to the toilet real quick. Are you okay with hanging out here? Of course. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So. Okay. So I, I can just explain you. Um, for example. Mm, I see this jar. I got his field. And when I move my hands, before I move my hands, I see that the small jar is moving. And then I just, when I, when I, uh, when I move, uh, yeah, exactly. When I move my hands, I try to imagine how this uh, jar is moving and then it's going up. You know, it's just uh, like, for example, suck, suck. You know, it's, uh, it's not so hard and, uh, you just have to see how it's moving. Before it's moving, you see this uh, movement, and then it's binding, complete the field, the the object. Um, yeah. But now I'm really a little bit weak to do this. Try to do this again because it's it takes a lot of energy, even for these small things. But I just explained, yeah, I see this and then I see how it's moving. So, but it should be visualization. It shouldn't be image. So people don't uh, uh, don't uh, think that if you wish something, it can come true. It's not like this. Do you feel about dragons? Uh... Okay, we have a lot of videos uh, about dragons, and I, I have, I have, uh, in our school there is Danila, that's a good, a big fan of dragons, of some fantasy things. Mm, just visit my YouTube, you will see this. Yeah, my co-founder, yeah. Lydia is always helping me, she's really the best. <laughs> Okay, does this have chakras? Does trees have chakras? Um, that's a good question. If trees have chakras, I think animals have chakras. Not so much like we. Are. It's somehow limited, I think, by by, by um, animals. That's around four chakras, not more. Only for uh, responsible for survival, but. If trees have chakras, I don't know. I know that it has a biofield. You can not a biofield, the energy field. Maybe it's biofield, whatever it calls. Yeah. But um, I don't think that's chakra. Uh, 
Uh, Christina Ayn asked me, does the energy come from your hands or mind? My hands are only helping. It exactly is from my mind and through my eyes. So I see how it's moving. And then I try to combine it. If you didn't create any twin, the double, the double of the object, doesn't matter what you do with your hands, it will not move. Okay, Ryan, sorry. I, I took your time. Your turn. Oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, I'm just... Hmm. Can so you can see the questions? Yeah. I see all the questions in the comments. Um Lydia can't see them. Ah, Lydia can't see them, okay. No. It's weird. They should be Only there. I didn't Lydia. do anything different. They should be there. I'm not sure why she can't see them. Yeah. Okay, um, I think, shall we wrap this up? Do you have extra time for more comments or do you have to be somewhere? I wouldn't want to keep you. We can answer something. If you have yeah. something interesting, please send it's... us energy, said Lucky BB. Uh, Lucky, think about that's around 100 people. If I will say energy to everyone, what should remain by me? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> You'd be dead, just be a skeleton on the live stream. I can explain how to create it, how to generate it, but not how to send it because it's. Here's a question here from Deborah Harvey. She says, the lighter the object, the easier. I think it's um, a question. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Has... No. Thank I you just for use this. I, I just use this light object for. Uh... So you mean okay? Um, um, of course, of course. I, 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 for example, the, the the tree, it was around 30, 40 kilos. I don't know, and it was really hard. Mm. The the most uh, the biggest white, what I uh, what I moved, it was some way chill, some car way chill. It was around three hundred kilo. Uh, but uh, that was um, when I was in the top shape. I was really very, very strong. It was like maybe 12, 13 years ago with my teacher. But you should understand that it's really hard um, when, you're, when you're alone, when you're without your teacher. For example, he could share his energy with me. That's, that's only one uh, benefit. If you're, if you're learning something from your teacher, you can get his energy hand to hand. And then you get energy. But also very important so you know the object. Because uh, moving of the object before you have to know this. Knowing, I mean, you can uh, read the field very fast. Because if you touch something, you get the information of the object. And then you have to create in your mind. And how to do this, it needs time. <clears throat> so, because for example, if you see some master who all the times make uh, telekinesis with other things, for me, it's almost impossible. You need to know the object. And because of this, I use almost the same object because I know them, I have this information field and I can, and I can uh, control it. Is a oh my gosh, have you ever tried? Can you, says Ash, lift a car with your power? Mm, as I said, I uh, the biggest attempt was the uh, moving some wheel. It was like a motor from the car. I think it's around 300, 400 kilo. <clears throat> Nothing bigger than this. I think I'm not. I, I even don't know if the teacher would do this. My teacher, Arne. Of course, maybe there is someone in the world who can do this. Hmm. But um, unfortunately, I don't know all people uh, who even was uh, connected with Arne. So with my teacher, maybe I should do this. Maybe I should have contact with them to ask them something. I used to imagine being in the gym, 
stacking all the weights on there, then using my mind to make it lighter and just <laughs> show off in front of everyone. Yeah, yeah that was, cool. uh, you mean what I lift or what I moved? The, do you lift? I didn't lift. I didn't lift this switch or this motor. Uh, it just I just move it like he. Oh, you move like telekinesis. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow. I oh. tried to, but uh, it was uh, like I would just run and touch it very fast. Exactly, okay. just uh, just rotate it, fall down, and it was. I couldn't lift it up. It wasn't so fun. King Brand two hundred twenty two says, "Read the field. What do you like?" You mean connect to the object? Okay, just wait a minute. Uh, Lydia asked me that I say uh, what was the uh, very uh, what was Lydia how, the question? Это было дерево порядком 70 или 80 килограмм. Не то, что вы видите на видео, оно было тяжелее. Он 70 или 80 килограмм. He lifted a, a tree that was about like 70 to 80 kilos that was really heavy. But uh, he doesn't have the video of it, but he did it once. Of such the video you saw action. that uh, the tree is uh, like around 30, 40 kilos, not more. If you saw this video on my mm -hmm. YouTube. Yes. And that was a very interesting question, connection to the object. They develop, you develop the connection to the object. There's a couple of steps. Uh, um just um i prefer to start with telekinesis because when you start with telekinesis you develop this reading field you need it later in uh levitation but on this on the other level higher level uh for the people who start uh, at once with uh, levitation all the almost they they lose this uh, fight they cannot win there because they don't understand how it works if you start with telekinesis that's exactly this question how to read the field and what is reading the field when you touch something when you touch someone someone or something you get information uh, i just give you example my teacher could just uh, shake the hand and could explain could tell everything about the person everything what he did last week what he ate what he who he slept with he thought everything because you have information in a smallest part on your hand it's like this uh, the information is everywhere on us if you touch it you have it on you but how to read it or how to understand it it's very difficult when you start to learn it uh then then it's really uh, really difficult way because first of all you need to understand how to uh, how to get this information then how to translate it and uh, then how to unzip it how to you know it's like it's like in in foreign language then you have to translate in your language you have to see it it's really difficult really difficult Have you ever, have you, I don't know. have you ever heard of moving something by shooting energy out of the body and then having that make direct contact with the object? Without uh, having contact. Yeah, like you would imagine a ball of energy, maybe a small one the size of a marble, shooting out of your chest and hitting something. Have you heard of using telekinesis in that way or? Lydia? No visualization, more so just feeling. Maybe you'll visualize the energy ball, but have you heard? Are you familiar with anything like that? Okay, just wait a minute. I, I'm getting translation. Um, what, what do you mean? I mean, uh, you're getting you you're pulling energy from here to what? So let's say energy can be as hard as matter. So I would imagine energy in my chest and condense it and then will it fire out like a gun and hit something, knocking it over. Is that possible? Oh, do you think? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. It's possible. And maybe you see this uh, contactless fight. 
sometimes they use this. You know, they uh, fighting without contact. They can use these techniques. But in my case, I never did it. Uh, instead of this, I did only um, coming out of visualization. Exactly at this, this place, that's our heart chakra. And here, I just let my visualization out. For me, it's very easy. For example, if I do some visualization of improving some situation, I let, let it go from here. Exactly where is my amulet. But exactly the same thing, but it's not like energy which you can touch. It's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Cool. I also I, I thought to... I thought that you can you can really use it like a bullet. I know this. Yeah, I, I did it one time. Um, I, I knocked. I put a straw in a glass, a wine glass. This was ages ago. And I was trying to figure out how to do it. After watching a bunch of YouTube videos, I couldn't quite make heads or tails as to what you should do. So I just kind of tried to figure it out. And so I, I'd make this little energy ball and I'd shoot it out, and then it would knock the straw and move it. I'm like, okay, cool. But that could just be, you know, coincidence, maybe wind or there's no wind. I made sure, but maybe no, no, something no, 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 knocked no, it no, over. No. So I tried it again and it worked. And I was like, okay, twice isn't a coincidence. But then I called my friend and I had him watch me and I did it again and it knocked it. And okay. um, I got super <laughs> excited. And then I shared it on YouTube, but I don't think people believe it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, if, I got you, if so... you're feeling if you're feeling uh, some empty energy in this uh, in this place, for example, you you let it go and then you feel this empty place, then it worked. Then it really worked. Yeah, yeah, so cool. Let's see any more questions. Oh, we have one in. Is that Russian? So maybe you can read this one from Space Two Hundred One. Lydia, can you see this or not? Yes. Yes, I can see it. I have a question in regards to telepathy. In when you are doing the practices of clairvoyance uh, with the friend who, who is in the process of studying or uh, who taught by himself was taught by, by himself. Um, I made a wish uh, in my mind with uh, a, a number. And then he would call that number. Was that would call a telepathy from his side, or this is just a regular reading the field? Reading the field can be only uh, succeed if you touch something. Without touching, there is no possible to read any field. Um, because of this, it's also very important to understand uh, many people are afraid to show uh, up their pictures or pictures of someone of their children or something like this <clears throat> there is actually no contact don't compare with old pictures where there's photons touch this uh, plastic uh, silver plastic something else and uh, with those pictures, you could do some magic or you can just uh, read the field. If you didn't touch your friend, I guess that was a telepathy. He didn't read the field. He just uh, got this uh, thought in his mind and it worked. I think it was more telepathy. So in my opinion, you cannot read the field without touching. And uh, that's like good advice for people. Don't be afraid to show any 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 picture in some internet because no one can do anything bad uh, with these new pictures, these digital pictures. Something bad can happen with all pictures because the technique of uh, making the picture is something else. So before all pictures on a paper, you know what what we did in our childhood that's the technique is something else so new technique new uh digital uh pictures are not dangerous to show someone yeah development this, of the film was different yeah. this one isn't so much a question she's just talking to someone else in the chat but i want to bring it up anyway see your uh your thoughts on it tiny gypsy says the advertisements for the magic x lol they always had demons on them so like I remember when Chris Angel came out, he would walk up walls um, and, and similar magicians 
people would assume that they were possessed by demons or, or they had some ties in magic. What are your thoughts on that? Have you thought about that? Uh, actually, um, <clears throat> I know that um, Chris Angel, for example, um, shows nice tricks, but at the same time, he can do levitation. I don't think that he has some connection to demons. I know that he he learned something. He didn't learn from Arne, but he learned from someone who knew Arne. And uh, that's a good way. For example, uh, for people who can do something, they can pretend to be some freaks. They can pretend to be connected with demons. That's a good. Uh, that's a good idea to hide that they can do something really important. Believe me, many of them make this uh, magician because they try to hide what they really can. Uh, and by Chris Angel, there's I think he has no connection with demons. I think so. And but he can really do some good sitcoms like levitation. I saw him making it. That's, that's real. Have to understand if it's real or not. Mm. It's just so, it shouldn't look very nice, first. And the second, there shouldn't be a lot of people uh, around him. If the people are really too close, it's not possible. Uh, I saw the levitation of Dynamo. I think it was somehow in Brazil. He, uh, he was uh, exactly among the people and then he started to make levitation. That was fake absolutely fake because you cannot do so close to other people you can even not concentrate at this moment and even if you concentrate your energy your energy field your biofield will be mixed with other energy and it's not possible yeah there we go that is which is about is telekinesis and chi the same no it's not the same Okay, I think it was good interview. Yeah. Yeah, it went pretty smoothly. Um, yeah. Some minor camera glitches here and there, but in the end, I think it was pretty great. Yeah. I appreciate you being the guest Thank here. Thank you very much have... for inviting me. Yeah, I don't usually have um, guests here at all, but I figured this would be a fun one. And um, yeah, appreciate you. Appreciate you being here and answering my audience's questions. Thank you very much. We can actually do like this. If the people are really, if people really like, we can make a second part where it will be some private question. Maybe we can go a little bit deeper in our, in, uh, in this material. And so we can really ask what people from esoteric really should done and shouldn't done, you know, to get some stage of esoteric. What do you guys say? Do you want a part two? Just make a thumb up. Thumb up. Tiny Gypsy says this was thoroughly enjoyable. Fabulous community. Awesome. We got a yes from PCW22. Whole bunch of hearts. Indeed says praise the sun. Yeah, we got a whole bunch of yeses. But we have to good. say thank you to Lydia without her. It wouldn't work. Lydia, thank yeah. you very much. You're very welcome. I'm happy to be here with all of you. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. We'll get in touch after the call and figure out something. Thank you, Ryan, so much. Thank you, Ernst. Yeah. And no thank problem. you for the community. It was thank a pleasure. You. Thank you for having us. No problem. If you guys want to know where to get his courses or how to be taught by him i left a link in the description below if you want to purchase anything on his website use the coupon code your potential for five percent off okay do it again thank you lydia says lucky bb a lot of appreciation All right see you guys take care thank you ryan bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye.